Hey, this is Mr. Bubbles, giving you my impressions of the Infinity Studios Zoran life-size torso. Uh, giving it to Flankster to go ahead and put on his channel and, and share with folks. Yeah, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Shane at Seeker Compass as well. I've gotten quite a few of my Lord of the Rings pieces over the years from those guys and uh, they've taken care of me. But yeah, right off the bat, main thing to know is uh, this is an absolutely massive piece. Uh, and I'd say pretty difficult to display. I'll just give you a view from a few different angles here. Actually had a lot of these pieces here on sliders over the last couple weeks. Sliding them around, just figuring out the best way. Uh, to display it and fit everything in this area without getting too overcrowded. I end up going with this scene here to be able to give it this type of, of view. There's plenty of space for the Balrog bus to breathe. And uh, on that back wall, I'll put some of the, the weapons and props that I've got uh, that aren't displayed yet. Kind of make that like a little Easter egg uh, of armory stuff. But yeah, back back to Sauron here. Um, very heavy. Uh, I we definitely appreciated the fact that it comes in multiple pieces, unlike the Thanos torso over there, which is mostly just one giant, ridiculously heavy piece outside of the gauntlet. Um, this does come in multiple pieces. The head, the shoulders, the arms, uh, they, they all come off. Uh, the cape obviously um, the base is quite large and it's connected to the torso here and it's very heavy uh, but manageable with a couple of people um, the arms themselves are very heavy you know these type of things you know key in and out which is nice so you don't have to worry about things being broken Yeah, the other just general comment I would make is, you know, really, in my opinion, the best view of this is like this angle here, which is a reason why, you know, it's so hard to display because, you know, it's going to come way out from the wall to do that angle. If you do it flat on its back, you know, and you have more of this kind of angle, I just don't think that's really the best look for the statue. I mean, it almost has to be like this three-quarter pose here, or this three-quarter angle, whatever you want to call it, uh, just looks the absolute best. And then obviously you have to get it off the ground. Um, you know, if you put it on some type of garage shelving, it's not going to fit very well, and it'll probably end up being too tall. So you'll end up having like the spikes on his head hitting the ceiling. So I had to have this custom pedestal made. You know, I went through pedestal source, you know, they do really good pedestals, but they're not cheap either. So for that custom base, which I think was about, you know, 24 inches high, 28 inches wide, 22 inches deep. I think those are the measurements there. Um, that was another 600 some odd dollars that you're invested into the $5,000 statue plus the shipping of the statue, which is crazy. So you're, you're heavily invested in this piece, both, both from a display perspective, a cost perspective, everything else. But having said all of that, uh, I would definitely say it's a signature piece in any collection, especially for any Lord of the Ring fans. For such a large piece, it's got great detail. Just, uh, I'd say really tells a story you know, a dynamic pose, which is cool for these large pieces. This hand here, just really great. You can see size perspective from like my hand. I mean, it's really <laughs> Sorry, I bumped into the pinball machine there. But uh, 
yeah, just absolutely massive, but really, really well done. I was hesitant on this because I knew it was going to take up a lot of space, uh, but I'm obviously pretty committed to the Lord of the Rings bit at this point in this area, and I just, at the end of the day, couldn't pass on this one. The cape is a really nice touch, but again, I think this is where how you display it is really important. Like I got the stand to be, you know, high enough to where the cape would drape properly and sit nicely, you know, just above the, the ground. But it's a really heavy duty fabric. And on the back, it's, it's wire so you can pose it. Yeah, everything about this piece is, is high quality, heavy duty. Um, is it worth it? You know, some, some folks have kind of asked that question is like, is the quality really there to justify the cost? I think just, you know, the pure size starts getting you close to that $5,000 cost range. But I think in general, uh, the quality is definitely there. I do appreciate the fact that, you know, it's fiberglass. So some of the things like the head and the shoulder blades, they're not overly heavy. Like definitely a decent weight doesn't feel cheap or anything, but it's not that like ridiculously heavy polystone feeling for some of these other parts. So yeah, it's kind of an overview there and I'll show you the light up feature on the uh, the ring in a second. You can see here, you cannot see the lighting on it at all when it's not on, which is neat. So let me turn off the lights here and give you a different look at that. All right, here's what the ring looks like lit up. Let's see if I can get that in focus, here we go. You can see how it's kind of flashes, fades in and out, but the writing is super sharp. A really neat effect. I mean, I'd say one of the cooler light up features on uh, a lot of the statues. I mean, a lot of times you have these light up features that don't add much value, uh, but on such a large piece, it's really just like the perfect addition and uh, you know pairs great with that light up feature in that balrog back there as well but yeah I, I appreciate the attention to detail to go ahead and incorporate this light up feature in the ring I would say the only uh, real downside is is that ring is powered by um, I forget exactly what they are but like three of the small LR44s and um, I'm not a huge fan of this because they die quickly and you can't recharge them. I think it'd be much better if you could just have like one AA or one AAA battery and um, recharge it and probably get a longer life out of each charge. So to me that's kind of a miss. Especially with something this large, it's not like you don't have a way to incorporate having the little bit larger rechargeable battery type. All right, I just want to show you real quick how this light up feature works. So the finger's held in with a magnet. It's great, like fantastic design. You have easy access to it. Uh, but this is what I was saying. Instead of you know, this being designed to where, you know, you could have like a double A or a triple A battery that's rechargeable. Instead, you've got three, I think they're LR44s. Um, but either way, the non-rechargeable batteries. And just while I was doing this video here, I could tell that they were starting to run out of juice. The lettering wasn't as light as I remember it being. I mean, I've probably only run that lettering maybe... 30 minutes total and it's a little dimmer than uh, 
when I first put those batteries in. So to me, that's, that's just unfortunate because you never want to have to just plow through batteries like that. So uh, in general though, again, just great design, great uh, additional feature on such a fantastic piece. Yeah, so I think, you know, my, my final thoughts on this would be no real downside. Everything is well done. The, the pose, you know, just how large and imposing it is. Definitely fits the source material and uh, lives up to the hype. I would say the really only downside, like buying any of these pieces this large, is the packaging that it comes in. Um, just absolutely filled up, you know, two pallets, crazy expensive shipping, you know, you're kind of put in that situation of, do I keep the packaging or not? Um, the boxes were just really beat up and kind of gross from sitting in a warehouse, you could tell. So, you know, in this situation, I'm, I'm not gonna even keep the packaging because first of all, I have no idea when I would ever sell this. And uh, second of all, the boxes are just so gross that, you know, and take up so much space that uh, I just don't think it's worth storing them. And if I ever sold it down the line, then, you know, someone would just pick it up and I think the value would still be there because it's so unique and such kind of a one of a kind piece. I would also say that, you know, this might be one step above the uh, Queen Thanos bust. I mean, this bust is super amazing. Uh, just massive, fantastic piece. The gauntlet's a great light up feature. Uh, but I think the Sauron torso with, with both arms and just the source material, you know, I'm, I'm probably a bigger Lord of the Rings fan than I am a Marvel fan just makes me really appreciate this more. I think the pose is more dynamic and uh, just in general, just one step above that Thanos bust. And like I said earlier on, I really appreciate the fact that this comes apart, you know, that two normal people can can put it together and move it around, take the head off, take the shoulders, take the arms off. Um, oh yeah, that's the other thing too. Like these arms weren't impossible to put together. Uh, some of these infinity pieces are a real nightmare, like trying to put the pins into the shoulders. Uh, so I have uh, that Aquaman bust over there and it was absolutely, uh, it was horrific putting it together. That left arm never went on. And then um, I end up having to return the first bust because the holes were misaligned. Um, and that's always annoying when you have like a $4,000 statue and you know, just the engineering is, is horrific. So that was a real relief here that there was no problems. The arms went on without an issue. So I'd say across my collection, this is probably in the top top three or four pieces that I have now. Uh, I just think this Joker here will, will always be number one. Some bonus footage for folks, but this is by far my favorite piece. And it took so many years to just find that perfect likeness and get this whole area set up. But Sauron is not far behind, I'll tell you that. So, there you go. Thanks for watching.